Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. This is Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. I'm d- delighted to have a man here that I've known since he came to Washington, and I remember 1972, Tommy. But Tommy Giacomo, as far as I'm concerned, is the mayor of the D.C. restaurant world and certainly knows more famous people than any 10 people I know. Tommy, welcome to Our Town. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Daly. It's a long way from New York, New York, but... Um, so all down you grew up in uh, the Queens, right? Correct. Went to school in New York City. Yeah, very, very, very little school. I was hustling most of the time. <laughs> and your family was in, was your family in the restaurant business? My father was a bartender in Waldorf Astoria for 40 years. He started in the men's bar in the Waldorf Astoria. In those days, no ladies were allowed in the bar. Then it turned men's into, bar only? Yeah. Is that right? And they can't, can't yeah. do that now, of course. And, no, then they turned I think it into, that bar then, in the Mayflower I, one time was a men's maybe. bar. Maybe. Then they too. turned it into the Bull and Bear. Well, that's where, he, that's where he worked till the end of his career. And your father ran that restaurant all those years? Well, that was a great, great place. The Waldorf was the place he in New York, the best, One of the best hotels in the city, yeah. I love I love the war. We used to go up with Sonny and Margot Jurgens into the Giants game, Janice and I did, and uh, stayed at the Waldorf, but they were the good old days. But Tommy, um, and you worked in New York then? But You got into the bar business in New York? In 1993, I got a job in the New York Hilton Hotel. There's a bar back. That's where you just prepare for the bartender. You cut the fruit, get ice. Was that a new hotel at the time? Brand new. It just opened up, 1963. Wow. Yep. I remember the great, great that New York Hilton was a great hotel when it opened. Mm -hmm. Of course. It was one of the uh, the jewels in the Hilton crown, right? Correct, Along with the Waldorf and so forth. And was anybody else in your family in the bar business? Your dad, of course. No, my brother was in the catering business. Which brother? Raymond. My friend Raymond? Yes. yes. <laughs> ah, ah. He was in a catering business in the city? Yes. In, or in Queens? In Queens. Flushing. And very successful, I would imagine. Yeah, Raymond knew the business side yes. of it, right? Mm-hmm. I came down to be his personality. And then this thing happened because I lived through part of it with your people. A friend of mine uh, came to me and said, we're putting a group of people together to entice a New York restaurant to open a Washington division. It was... Um, uh, what, what we call him, Peter Palm Tree, Wyatt <laughs> Dickinson, and uh, Mark Sangram. They they put Mark the group Sandgram. they put the group together. And um, uh, what's what's I'm thinking, um, Jenny? Who's in that? Uh, Dickerson, Wyatt Dickerson Dick- was correct. in that group. Yes. That's where I first got got close to why I knew his wife because she had worked as Nancy Hanschman, and then she became Nancy Dickerson. Correct. And she had worked at WMAL at one time, and Wyatt asked me to get in a group, and I met all you guys and met. The uh, Bozzies and the Gansies. Correct. Now, how did you, what was your connection with the Bozzies and the Gansies? My brother Ray and Bruce Bozzi joined at the hip. They've just been best friends they, since kids. W- were, were they from Queens too? Yes. The Bozzi yeah, family? yeah, they were from Astoria. And uh, how about, uh, what's his name? Not Bozzi, but um, Gansies. Were they New Yorkers they too? They were Long Island. Um, and that's got started. The Palm came up with a group. I'll never forget that. And everybody put up a, a amount of money. It's 20, I don't think twenty it was, investors, ten thousand each. Ten thousand for investment. And after the first year, we knew we were going to be pretty successful. So we tried to buy you investors out, and you were one of the few people that took. I think we gave you twelve thousand. I think that's what it was, it was a lot of money. But right. then again, the interest rates back in those days was like thirty percent. You know, my, my, I remember my mortgage rate in my house in McLean was like seventeen percent, something like that. <laughs> so and you took the twelve thousand around, and all the other guys tried to hold us up. No, we want fourteen. We want fifteen thousand. We said, look, worst comes to worst, we'll just run this place into the ground. You'll get nothing. The guys so, were going to try to hold you up. It was so yeah, funny. Yeah. And they, they all went in with their, they were people had money. Well, they were, yeah, they were all very wealthy people. Tommy, that was, yeah. but they were still great years. I remember vividly opening, Tommy, in 1972. And uh, November 16th. I remember Warner Wolf. We even got Warner Wolf at that opening. And it was such Henry, a big Henry thing Kissinger. for our city to bring this New York restaurant. The first. The first real steakhouse I remember that wasn't in the market. Because yeah. like in New York, they had great steakhouses in the market. Here we had Hendrix and another one. But no steakhouses in town till the Palm came. There was no competition at all. There was very few. At the east end of town, there was nothing over there at all. That's where we had all the people from Capitol Hill coming to the restaurant when we first opened up. Absolutely, because nothing over there at all. Exactly. Now it's completely but different. But it was also, Tommy, the food was a very, very attractive thing to people who, who wanted a big dinner. And that's where... 
I never call it the dining place. I call it an eating place. And the crowd flocked to it. It was great from 72 on. Mm -hmm. And the quality of the food is what kept us in business for 45 years. We never chinched on anything. You know. It's, you know, it's a first, first class Prime restaurant. age beef. We didn't give a choice. Beef, prime age beef. Even though it cost us a hell of a lot more than choice, we, we never went that route. And to this day, we still serve prime beef only. But it paid off, Tommy, because the reputation yeah. was, mm -hmm. it was enormous. And it brought the celebrities in by the truckload. Correct. Well, that, I think you and Raymond were part of that. The people Raymond didn't turn off, you brought it. Correct. <laughs> he could have been, he could be a tough guy. He's a tough guy, oh, right? Oh, my God, yes. But for some reason, Raymond loved me. <laughs> we got along great. I didn't get along great with his wife, but nobody that was did. a difference. No, nobody story. did. <laughs> she never punched me anyway. Just play in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> I stayed away from him, Tommy. <laughs> Believe me, I did. But some of the great things that, that went on at the Palm, and uh, I, I can't say enough about it because it is you. Tommy Giacomo is the Palm. And the palm is Tommy Giacomo. Even though Ray did the the hard work and the groundwork, Tommy, you made the restaurant just by being there. And all the people that would come in, and it was such a big part of, you know, it was our place. It was our place and that would maybe Duke's occasionally for lunch, but the palm always for dinner with my group. The broadcasters that I brought in from NAB. Correct. And the people that became uh, credit card holders of the palm made a difference. And then you begin to, to attract the real Hollywood celebrities. Now, how did that come about? Before uh, you opened the Hollywood Palm, too, right? Yeah, Wally Genzi was a big person that hung out with all the celebrity people. And plus, we had a lot of connection with Broadway in, in New York also. So, so the showbiz crowd knew about yeah, it, how good it was. Correct. And the restaurant in, in New York, of course, thrived. Um, that was opened in 1926. Oh, I know. That's, 40, that's 40, a landmark. 45th in and 2nd Avenue. And the name of the palm, they wanted to make it called the Palma. That's the name of the country with the, the sunny, but they're from in Italy. But they didn't speak English. Like, I don't speak English. And they said Palma. They said Palm. They got Palm yet? We said, what the hell do I know? And that's what became Palm instead of Palma. <laughs> <laughs> they're Palma. I, did you know that? I no, never heard that no, before, Tommy. Yeah. And then you attracted the, uh, the Washington uh, intelligentsia, as it is. Uh, Vernon Jordan and his group were the Vernon still the comes in almost every Sunday. I mean, they just were regulars, regulars, yeah. regulars, right? Bob, and uh, Bob Strauss. Bob Strauss. I remember he would. They were. It was the Dukes and the Palm, yeah. Palm and Dukes, mm -hmm. and that was a great relationship. One of my baby favorite Bob Strauss stories. He talks about this old guy. His wife died, so he goes <laughs> to the pet shop, and he goes, "I'm kind of alone." Pet guy goes, "Oh, I got this little canary. He sings all day. He sings all night. We keep you happy as can be." Guy goes, he takes the canary home, and sure enough, the canary's singing and singing. Guy's happy. Two days later, he goes to change the cage. He looks, canary's got one leg. So he takes it back to the pet shop. Goes, hey, what have you got a bird you give? You got one leg. The guy goes, did you want a singer or a dancer? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take either one. <laughs> of course, James Carville was a regular, yeah. and I guess, does he still come to the Palm? He well, don't live here anytime anymore. he's in town, he's always there. Yeah. Whenever he's in town, of yeah. course. And Mary and, Mary. and the kids. You know, Janice did a promotion. With uh, with Mary and, but not James, but Mary and Tommy fixed us up with a big table. He took you yeah. and a bunch of, well, we won a prize. That's Johnny, what it was, to have Mary, lunch with Mary Carvel and at the Palm. Uh, but she was Mary what? She wasn't married then to James, I don't think. Mary Madeline. Yeah, Mary Madeline, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Time. She used to do that show called Equal Right. Time. Yeah. She did yeah. a show after the restaurant too one day. Yeah. She, she, when she's in town, she'll yeah. come in. Yep. Yeah. We haven't seen Mary in so long, but she turned in to be a good friend of both of us. Because the girl that I knew that was promotion, promoting her show and doing the uh, Anne editing. Clank. Anne Clank. Oh, wow. Anne Clank wow that's was a, that's also a name right from there. the past. Wow. Yeah. Now, but tell, tell me about this. Of all your characters that, that saturated the palm, you got so many great stories. I, I recall the story about the, the, the guy that came in to try to stiff you for the dinner, and you all threw, threw him out and said no. Oh, I got in a fight with him. Back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I knocked him out, too. <laughs> He said the food's good. Well, he went down and he tried to he went to the court to put him, get us arrested or something like that. And the judge knew who he was. He goes, no, that was a, a, a Toyota defense that Tommy used. You asked for it, you got it. <laughs> Tell the story. Tell the story. Well, the guy that, that didn't want to pay for his dinner, he said he didn't have any money. That happened frequently, I would imagine. No, very very rarely. But then you get people try to hustle you all the time. Well, they hustle you, absolutely. Yeah, sure. In the restaurant yeah. business. Mm -hmm. But you all threw him out, and he came back later and said, hey, the food's good. I think I have another. Day. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> no bill. Only in America. The, pr the price happen. was right. Did you ever have any bigger bigger celebrity or 
almost celebrity than Maury Siegel? Nobody was better than Maury Siegel. No, like, so many stories about me, Tommy. Yeah. You know, there's his stories. I just love him to death. He would, he would come in. First of all, he would sit on the first table, table one. <laughs> then he'd drop like 25 napkins on the floor. <laughs> I swear to God, I had to deal with Alan Bubis and Linens of the Week. I said, I think he's, I'll throw the nap, you give me a kickback, and I'm going to charge for the palm. But, but my best story, most story is, he calls like July or August, he tries to disguise, disguise his voice. It'd be like me trying to disguise my voice. Well, Andy trying to disguise his voice. And well, he we, goes, had, we had that. He goes, hello, I'd like to make a reservation for New Year's Eve. This is July or August. So I go, hang on one minute. I go, in those days we had to book no computer. I go, Jim, I'm sorry, so we're booked up for that night. He goes, hang on, pal. I haven't told you what year yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, uh, Tommy. So many of the, the great stories of the people that went on and, uh, and what Mo brought to the restaurant. But he also brought you connection, or did you connect him to the racetrack? Who was the connector there? Because he loved the racetrack. We both we both were horse degenerates. I was a horse degenerate. If we don't say better, horse degenerates, that's the word, because we are degenerates. You really I, I, was, the I was betting in New York when I was 15 years old, betting on horses. Is that right? That was before we, OTB, we, we, we got to the We got to way before that. Well, and we would go to the track together. Did you go to the track? Well, the, what, the Aqueduct and the Aqueduct, uh, Belmont, Belmont yeah. New York. And and here, where did you all go here to? Laurel Racetrack. You didn't. You didn't like the sulkies. You we wanted to race. Well, no, we never. The sulkies were horrible. Bowie had a track at yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah, turned into a training. Yeah, training track. And you, some of your your characters that work for you are legendary in Washington to me, like Joe Lavaca. Yeah, he married very wealthy. <laughs> oh no, I talk about he hitting married the money, didn't he? Hitting the lottery without buying a ticket. That's pretty good. <laughs> the last time we saw Joe and his wife was in New York, Jenny. Remember, she was wearing a a bandana. I said. I don't like that hat. And he said, that ain't a hat. <laughs> she ain't got no hair. <laughs> Lavaca's wife. Those are the great deal. Tommy, what about all the characters that you can think of off your head? Um, did, well, Joe Lavaca and the guys, I lived through that when they had the IRS problem. Were there four of them? Yeah, at least four that I can remember, yeah. They lived, I lived through that because they had a problem with uh, their taxes. And the IRS was fining them, and didn't they put Joe and a couple of them in a, in a halfway house or something? Well, I hired a lawyer for them. They could have got it made, you know, kept it out of court, but they they didn't wanted to fight. Didn't Ed Bennett Williams help you? No, another guy named Tom Green helped me. But the, the, oh, I know but you the mean, lawyers, right? but the way it is the the lawyer we hired the lawyer to protect ourselves, which we did. We, so they fought it tooth and nail, it became a felony, whatever it was. And they did like six months in a halfway house on the weekends, you know. Oh, yeah. oh, on the weekend, we'd go in, then they come to you work. had to go in, and right. Lock in, yeah. We came down, at, at Siegel's behest, we came down while Lavaca could work, because he, he could work, and then he had to go back at night, right? right? Correct. Yeah. And we brought a shopping bag, and we had a, a handsaw, <laughs> <laughs> something called explosion, everything to help him spring out of the jail. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't think it was funny. No, was but Mo loved it. We, we had a great time with the guy. And then one of your guys left and opened a restaurant to... Um, Mo, Mo Sussman. Mo and Joe. Joe and Mo's, yeah. Very Joe successful, very successful. They just ran right into the ground. It's a shame. Sussman, right? Yeah. They, they had one in Alexandria, and it, it, they, I don't know why they tried to be bigger than they should have been. Correct, yeah. They were doing okay down that base. You know, Mo, Mo died in his sleep like two years ago. Oh, he did? Very young age, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was not old. Yeah. Then they had to place down on Pennsylvania Avenue, too. Yeah. They tried to expand too fast, yeah. Yeah. But nothing ever touched the palm. No. And then, mm. then the city began to change. The often often imitated, never duplicated. We're, no. the, we're the elite meat to eat. <laughs> no, they can never be. The people do it, Tom. But, but the change in the city has been so dramatic with all the new uh, venues and restaurants. And uh, you got right across the street, down the street, you've got the, the famous New York restaurant. What's that called? Um, Joe? Uh, no. What's the restaurant across the street, Tommy? Steakhouse. New York Steakhouse. Oh, Wolf's. It used to be Manny no, Wolf's, no, didn't no. it? No, no, no. Manny Wolf's. The, uh, the, the, club, the Snow Crab Claws. Oh, I don't know. Joe's? Well, yeah. That's, that's, Joe Stone Crab. Joe Stone Crab. Yeah, but that's on a different street. I'm talking about on 19th Street. There's a joint. No, no more on 19th Street. Is it gone? Yeah. 
Christiane Ricci's right across. Right. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. But she's in a different world. She's in that. Sam and Harry's was across the street oh, from me. Sam and Harry's. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, Sam and Harry's yeah, is gone. They, they went out of business also. <clears throat> we put a lot of restaurants out of business. You sure have. <laughs> Listen, Tommy, we're going to take a break now. We're, we're talking to Tommy Giacomo, the man who made the palm. This is NDO, and this is our town. This is Sonny Jorgensen. Got a confession to make. I let my wife drag me to one of those Mike Collins estate planning seminars. Like I don't have enough on my plate with a certain football team. Actually, it wasn't too bad. In fact, we both learned a whole lot about how to protect our kids and grandkids down the road and to take care of ourselves right now. So if you get one of Mike's invitations in the mail, go. I'm glad I did. Get all the information and register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. This is Andy Ockershausen. This is Our Town. I'm talking to Tommy Giacomo, the mayor of 19th Street and everything in between. A man who runs the palm, or the palm runs him. And you've had so many characters. We talked about some of them. We're going to talk about more, Tommy. Celebrities. Was there a bigger character than Jack Ken Cook? Bigger than life. There's nobody in the world be- be- better than him. He was such a character. He would come in the restaurant all the time with his wife, Marlena. And I had their pictures up on the wall. Like I, you, You're still up on the walls. I don't know how you made the cut, but I used I left it <laughs> twice. Yes. Janice is up too, you know. Yes, of course. So Jack comes in all the time. They sit in the same booth, 55. He thinks that when he wasn't there, nobody else would sit there. That's what he really thought. And they'd fight. He'd walk out and go, Tommy... Take the picture down. He's that big thing. He had. She's a bad, bad girl. And they go home. <laughs> they go home. They make up and call me up the next day. He says, Tommy, put your picture back up, right? And they come in and then another fight. Take the damn thing down, up and down, up and down. So finally, he takes. I take it down and he shows up. First thing she goes, Tommy, where's my picture? So Jack goes, Yeah, yeah. Where's it? Where's her picture? And he looks. He's got this look at his, his hand is caught in the cookie jar. Yeah, tell me, where's the picture? I go, uh, uh, water damage. Jack goes, yeah, that's right, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) The old man would would do anything, though, wouldn't he? I mean, God, he he had his driver out front. Yeah, he was Oh, my God, Tommy, what a character. And some of the the players would all come in there. I know one time I heard the story that... uh, Ed Williams was and uh, Billy Kilmer got oh, this is a great story. An altercation. Billy, Sonny, Billy's wife Sandy, and Dad in the middle of the room. Ed, E.B. Dad was in his usual back booth. He used to, he used to give me a hundred thousand, put some money in because the booth would shake every time, so the person's booth never hit him. Be hitting him, he'd get all pissed. A hundred bucks, fix the damn booth. So they're walking out. E.B. Dad was walking out. And he had a few drinks in him. Oh, he had a few cocktails. And right? Edward Bennett Williams. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. E.B.W. E.B.W. So I guess B- Billy says something to him, and Ed says something back, and the start the big argument starts. So I, I'm not I mean, they're going. So Billy grabs the keys from Leroy, the chauffeur. He goes, "You're not going anywhere until you apologize to Sandy." So there's a big hook. So now we say, "You know what? It's, we'll settle this right now." And, and Sonny was there. Sonny was drinking back in those days. <laughs> He's hiding. We go. No, we go. Let's we'll settle this right now. We're going to buy the team right now for two million cash. It's worth God knows how much more than that. Boy. I go. We don't have two million cash between the three of us. <laughs> so finally, I bought a round of drinks. Everybody calmed down, got them out. We were, we were, got the keys back from Billy, and off they went. You know, they were going to take the fight outside for a while, oh and you calmed God. it down. Yeah. Right? It was, but the stories that alcohol has fueled some great stories oh, yeah. in your play, correct? Yeah, Ed Bennett was a very smart man. I went to went up to Atlantic City one day with him. Just cause he loved the, he loved boxing. I love boxing. Yeah, he was big we in went boxing. Went to see uh, Jerry Quarry, this big Irishman from Long Island fighting Michael Spinks, who was a light heavyweight. So we go up to Atlantic City, me and Ed, get great seats, of course, Ed was paying. <laughs> and of course, Michael Spinks knocks this guy out, cold like in four rounds. And that guy was 6'9", he was huge. Ed goes, the only way we can make money on that fight, he goes, sell advertising space with the soles of his shoes. <laughs> 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 but Ed, yeah, and Ed was a sportsman, right? Yeah, well, he, he loved racing too, didn't yes, he? Yes, he had a horse. He had one horse. <laughs> then, he, then he also wanted, he wanted, we wanted to buy a boxer. Tommy, can you find me a? He had a boxer called Irish Mike Baker. I remember that. He, would, he would bleed during the national anthem. That's how bad this kid was. Okay, <laughs> so I got this guy's seventy-five thousand dollars. Got this guy in New York, friend of mine, Hector Macho Camacho, lightweight fighter. We can, we can buy him. So Ed, I got this guy. He goes, "What's his name?" I go, "Hector Macho Camacho." He goes. 
the hell kind of name is that? Hector Mas? Are you crazy? Of course, the guy went on to win five titles. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he was huge success. Yes, right? exactly. Macho yeah. Camacho. Hector Macho. He wears the crazy shorts yes, and crazy exactly. boxing shoes. Yeah, exactly shoes. right. Yeah. And and Ed also, and I I am privy to the story. I'm sure you know. He was had to deal with the Orioles. If he didn't get the stadium, he's going to move that team to Washington. And that's when William Donald Schaefer said, no, we're going to build the stadium. It's, it's probably and Larry Lucchino and those best, guys worked on it. Best stadium in, in the every, every Every ballpark since then has copied them. Exactly. So so good. You ever see Lucchino? Yes, I, 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 I caught him every once in a while. I got a text him the other day when he, when he, he, got, he got left the uh, Oreo, uh, left the Red Sox, you know. Oh, I know. What's he doing now? Not this. I said, I'm going to his job open. Until you find the, until you get yourself on your feet. Oh, so he, he texts me back. He goes, "Okay." He goes, first thing we do is unionize." I, I text him back. As Donald <laughs> Trump said, "You're fired." I go, "That's." <laughs> but meanwhile, I, I googled him the other. You know what he's worth? Lakino was, a, one was point, a great guy. One point one billion dollars. Larry. No way. That's what I googled it on my Google. That's what he came up with. Wow. Yeah, Jenny will do. Check that out. But he's a great guy, by the way. Yeah, like, but meanwhile. but Ed was was great. I. I remember Ed Williams told me, you can say what you want about um, cases and people. He said, and he said, no matter what happened, when I went to the court, in a federal court, when I was facing the United States of America, he said, no matter who it was or who I was representing, that was a big thing. The United States of America was fighting him. And he always knew that. He had a special feeling. You know, a real patriot, but he said, that's our country. Well, there's, there's a great book reading. They called EBW, The Man to See. It's a great, great book. I read Isn't the book. Something? I was in tears at the end of the book. It was, it was well, so he, well written. He was Washington legend, but a good guy. And we dealt with him with the Redskins for years. And he was a piece of cake. Compared to, the, well, Mr. Cook would, I think. Do you know that in all the years, Joe Gibbs could never call him Jack? He said, I never called him anything but I, Mr. Me, Cook. Me and Tony Connors were the only two people that could call him Jack. Siegel. And Riggins really, I didn't know that. Siegel did. Yeah. <laughs> he said, speaking of Siegel, Siegel and Jack had a big fight, okay? In the restaurant? No. Uh, oh. Argued each other. Apparently, uh, Mo wrote an article and said something. Oh, yeah. He was, he was very thin. So skin. I said, I go, Jack, you know, Mo says you're the smartest man. He goes, well, damn it, Tommy. Why didn't he put that in the article? So now Mo's sick and he's in the hospital. I'm going, I'm trying to get them back together. So I called Jack. Oh, Jack, you know, at least you could do is, like, you I know you're not going to send something to this. You'll say you're sorry and things. So Jack sends a big bouquet of flowers to Mo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry we had a fight. Let's be friends. On this regards, Jack can cook. So Mo picks up with this. Goes, it's not a signature. Of course it's not a signature. It's not in the florist. The florist wrote the thing. That would be right away. He thought he was being flummoxed. <laughs> but, but Jack was... was such a such a character, and then one of your all time great characters who I've noticed for years sort of grew up in your restaurant was William A. Regardi, or as War as he's known, Bill, William A. Regardi. Bill is a character of himself. Believe me, he comes <laughs> in. Uh, um, he is himself. He came in one time. I know, at Mo and Joe's, he had a record twenty one bottles of uh, Dom Perignon he bought, and that was the record of Joe and Mo. So he came to my restaurant with his crew from the Bugatti's magazine who had to break the record. So he, it's over 100 bucks a bottle. He got like 24 bottles of Dom Perignon. Then, <laughs> then of course, one lunchtime he comes in running shorts and rollerblades. I said, people go, who is this man? Is he nuts? <laughs> Bill didn't care. Remember him at fight night? He used to wear the robe? Yes. As a raging Bill? Yes, yes. I mean, he just got away with it. But those were the years when he was riding high, when the real estate yeah. business was good. Your business was fabulous. Well, well his right. segment on your show was absolutely incredible. He was really good. Oh, wasn't he good? Yeah, he he's, was, he's a talented guy. And, but seriously, he, his career was spent with the people who used the palm. He was there all the time. He was in front of everybody all the time. And he was a, a, a you know a champion for the palm. Yes, I'm he sure was. he sent you a lot of business and a lot of business people. And uh, he, he tried to redo the magazine. Of course, it didn't work, but... Uh, there's a reason for that, Tommy, and I'll get back to that and, and his problem after we take a break here. And this is Our Town with Tommy Giacomo, the NDO. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our newest restaurant over off New York Avenue. It's called Ivy City Smokehouse, 1356 Oakey Street Northeast. 
right next to the Heck Company warehouse. It is terrific, and we have the only seafood smoker in the District of Columbia. So when you go to your grocery stores or your delis, ask for Ivy City Products, 202-529-3300 or ivycitysmokehouse.com. Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. This is uh, Our Town, Andy Ockershausen, and, and I've got to stop to say that we've gotten such a great response from our Our Town podcast. It's been fabulous. If you like what you hear on Our Town, give us a review. It's easy to do. We also want to thank John Kelly of the Washington Post for a great article about Our Town. I think he captured the instance of what my wife, my gorgeous, beautiful, fabulous wife has come. We are not dead, Tommy. We've made a comeback. And <laughs> and Tommy Giacomo, you're alive and lively with us, and we're so glad because we're talking about some of the characters from our wonderful restaurant, and one of them was Ambassador Dick Carlson. Correct. A regular. Yeah, so I, no, nobody knows that Carlson has a cane collection from all around the world. Fabulous. 2,000 canes. Right? So I had back surgery. He goes, you know what? I got a cane for you. So he brings this cane in for me, and I'm walking around with this stupid cane, but it had a knife that came out of it, you know? So I'm teasing, teasing my kid. Oh, my kids go, ah, I'm going to stand more. <laughs> I go like this. Then I can't get the thing back in, so I bang it on the floor, and the cane cracks. Oh. Not a big crack, but enough of a buffer crack. So I finally got the sword back in. I'm, I'm up at night. Wait, I'm, I'm saying, God, am I going to tell this? Man? Then they come and tells me, he goes, I'm gonna, I just got a call for that cane. It's an 18th century, some British guy. <laughs> and the guy was getting like 2,800 bucks for this cane. So I go, oh my, now I'm looking in the book, telephone book for stuff. So I got some shoe polish. I polished it up, some little glue. I walked, I said, how you doing, Mr. Bassett? I threw the cane down. I walked through. I never, never said a word. <laughs> but I was up for three nights saying, what the hell am I going to do with this stupid? 2800 bucks. He just couldn't give me an old stupid cane to give me a damn collector's item. <laughs> but that collection is something. I've been to his home. Janice and I were invited over. Yeah, I've, I've never, never seen, seen so many canes. I heard him, yeah. Heard oh my God. Him. He's got a fortune in canes, right? Yeah. I mean, they're really, really good stuff. And his son, Tucker, comes in. Tucker, I bought his son from the restaurant. Did you hear that story? <laughs> no. Tucker wrote a great, a big fluff piece. The most powerful man in the most powerful city in the most powerful restaurant. The quote from Bill Regardi's magazine. Right. And it's in the New York Times. So I see the thing, the fluff the day before. Tomorrow, an article on Tucker Carlson about the most powerful man, most powerful city, most powerful restaurant in the world. Tommy drives. Oh, this is going to be great. And it starts off, and it's a fluff piece. It's doing great. And then he brings up this thing deal that I got involved in years ago and <laughs> right down the toilet. So I call, I call, I call Roger Carlson. He goes, what the hell did this guy do to me? He's out of his mind. Then Vegeta Greta Van Susser got involved in the loop and they trying, and they're all lobbying to get, I said, I'm not living back in my restaurant. That's it, he's banned from my restaurant. So then it started, then the Hill picked up on it. Some of the magazine, my corporate for this. <laughs> Stop saying, unless you say it, the quicker it's gonna go away. And finally we buried the hatch, no. Said, what? Well, he was trying to help you. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. I said, why would you do that? Roger's good advice, I tell you. He's another regular. We see Roger all the time. In fact, he had so many stories. We, we found about his days in Los Angeles at UCLA. He was sitting in that chair where you are, Tommy. All of these characters are in and around the palm. I've been in my life, as I say. I remember the opening in 72, and all the people was there. And I remember the, the, uh, the party with... I was so surprised to see Greta Van Susteren. And I said, she's got to be sitting in a hole or something because she looked like she's four feet tall. I she's couldn't very, believe she's it. She's a very tiny girl. I love her death. She's a very, very dear friend of mine. She's something else, mm -hmm. isn't she? Greta. Now, what did they do? They changed their show around. And I, I think they, she's it was a money the, problem or something. Yeah. I, I, Always no, money, she Tommy. She quit because the uh, the guy got fired. Roger Ailes. Yeah. He didn't harass her, did he? No. no. She, <laughs> she, she, she went to the bathroom, I'll tell you that much. Oh, I know she did. She liked Roger and, and rent to work for him. Now, what about the other Carlson? Um, what is Tucker's brother's name? Buckley. 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 He doesn't use the restaurant much, does he? No, no. He's got a handshake like Dexter Manley, you know. <laughs> another guy <laughs> crush your hands. Oh, I know. you got to be careful. We know about Dexter. He doesn't mean it. He's, he's like a big old bear. You know that. So, tell me, what are, what are you looking forward to with the restaurant now? Now, they, what do you, you call the managing director? Executive director. Executive director? Yeah. That's a, There's only one Tommy Giacomo. Correct. But that name is on the card, though. <laughs> that stayed on the card? Yeah, that stayed I on the card. It. And what is your plan? Are you going to move down with Raymond? Are you hanging in? No, no. I'm going to stick around for a while. Tommy, you've been since 72. That's a long time. 
Yep. That's 46 years, Tom. 44 mm -hmm. years, right? 40, be 44 years. It is 44, and I'll be 45 next year. That's incredible, Tommy. That's a lifetime. It sure is. And uh, did you ever see, uh, you, I, you mentioned uh, Tony Sybil. Um, the, are you involved, or Tony's not, in the Restaurant Association, other than uh, you probably pay dues? I, yeah, I used to be involved. I'm not involved anymore. Not involved involved with, no. with uh, Stuart Long and others. Now, tell me about, there's a story about Muhammad Ali. Oh, this that a classic. I know that he was in town, because we used to have him at fight night. We had him a couple of times. I went to an opening of a Muhammad Ali barbecue place in Silver Spring. That's the way we got him there. And Ali was was so recognizable. I don't think you could taste two steps if people didn't recognize oh, him. Oh, the, the crowd in front of the restaurant was 20 deep trying to trying to look in through the windows. So he comes into the restaurant, bigger than life, of course, you know. Some, some lawyer said, I'm going to bring him in for you. I don't know who this lawyer was, but he, he brought him in. And he goes, I'm going to get a picture with him. And he's sitting at the table, Ali's sitting at the table, going, how long is going to make me wait forever? So he finally gets up on the table, he shuffles in, and he's in good shape in these days. Because he put a second Sphinx fight, 87, I believe. Goes in my office, and Mo Sussman's taking pictures. I got like 35 pictures of me and Ali. Got one like this, punching him, and he's punching me, and I got him by the tie and smacking him in the head, <laughs> making ugly faces. So I put the one with, with the big jab, which was, was, was switching, jabs, switching jabs back and forth, and I had it hung up on the wall in the restaurant. Oh, mate. Ten years later, he comes back, and this is when he's just getting sick. A little bit of Parkinson's. Really so I go, hey, champ, you see that picture on the wall? I said, you staged that picture. He looks at the picture. He looks at me. You know, for ten years, but my hair is all different. You know, he's all different. He looks at me like a sweaty. He goes, he says, let's do it again. So I got the same picture ten years later in color. It's really <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Let's do it again. The way he said it, it was so funny. <laughs> what a character, though. But like you say, the crowds would just over him nobody tried to touch him they stayed away from him just to see him yeah he was... meant so much you know uh, also i know you did some work with uh, woodward and bernstein uh when they were working on uh, all the presidents they were they worked they both worked at the washington post which is what on 16th street then i think and they would come in every day for lunch and sit in a booth in the back and nobody knew who the hell they were and they'd be just writing, writers. writing thing writing them little notes Talking on, you know, getting more. Carl would drive by with his bicycle and I'd tie his bike in the awning in front of the restaurant just to, just to drive my brother crazy. So I'm like, move that damn bike, someone's gonna trip over it. <laughs> so when the, when the movie came out, they invited me, Ray, and our families to the opening of all the presidents at the Kennedy Center. And of course, when the movie came on, they showed the, the, the Night Watchman sort of tape on the door, and only in Washington gets a standing ovation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Tommy. The, the, the story of those two guys, because the guys from the Post, there was a group that regular at the Palm for lunch was Andy Beyer, George Solomon, uh, all the, the uh, there was some other writers that they had, Ken Denlinger, and um, sometimes Tony was with them, but Tony was so anti-social that those guys didn't care, but they had their own group. And they were always in the Palm for yeah, lunch. Tony still comes in a lot. He's, he's doing his own podcast now himself, by the way. Oh, I know, and he's he's very upfront about it because he didn't want to share the money. With he had two years left on his contract. I don't know why he gave it up. He's no. a real curmudgeon, anyhow. You know. Oh, he can be a curmudgeon. Yeah. You know what we we like? Uh, Janice was his first one of his producers when he started in the radio. He used to do a show for WMAL Radio, and Janice and and uh, they have a good relationship. He did show for me at Channel Fifty and Champions. You know, we call it Redskins After Hours. And uh, Tony always said if he ever had a job, he wants to be on WML radio doing the morning show. And I said, sorry, we got Harden and Weaver. We don't have room for you. But but Tony's a local guy. He loves the city. and He, he always he plugs my restaurant on the show. He constantly plugs it. Matter of fact, he gets mail at the restaurant. It's like, like right, right into Santa Claus, it was North Pole, Santa Claus. <laughs> Palm restaurant, Tony Connor, the gladdest show up from all over the world, from Japan, Korea, South Africa, Russia, he gets letters, he gets wine, he gets... Uh, yeah, that's one of the things, Tom, that, that he discovered, that we, Janice and I have discovered, this whole idea of podcasting is all over. It'll always be there, Tommy, and you can tune it in, if, if you can get to tuning anywhere in the world, you can tune in OurTownDC.com. It's amazing, and we're so happy to be a part of it. And we're happy for you and so happy that you listened to it and you it means something to me for you. Well, thank, Tommy, thank, God the guy, thank God the guy at your party set it up on my phone. I would, not, I would never have had to set the damn thing up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I know. Tommy, I'm, I'm working on it, too. Thank God that Janice is a genius. She knows it all. But, Tommy, this has been so delightful, and we love the restaurant. You know that, and love you, and uh, all the guys and the characters will always be a part of our town. So, so we thank you for everything you've done for our town, and uh, this is Andy Ockershausen and Tommy Giacomo. Thanks for having me, Andy. Thanks, Thanks Janice. Tommy. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.